Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to tonight's episode of Poetry Live. Tonight, I'll be giving you a bit of Edmund Spencer as we read from The Fairy Queen, that famous poem that was written in honour of Queen Elizabeth. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, Susan. Hello, Queen. Hello, Ollie. Hello, Rosella. Hello, Felix. Hello, Tara. Hello, Louise. Welcome, welcome, everyone. How are you all this wonderful, wonderful evening? Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Uh, very, very excited to be reading this one for you tonight. Uh, we just don't get the chance to read enough Middle English these days. But we're not doing all of it, don't worry. We're not, I am great, thank you, Louise. Very well indeed. Susan, excellent. That's what we like to see. We like a great with exclamation marks. I am doing wonderful, thank you very much. Ciao, Rosella, ciao, ciao. Hello, Sarah, hello, Lynn, come in, come in. Come in. Middle English night tonight. Um, so you'll all get to see me struggle to get my tongue around some words. I will say, because we did uh, when we did Chaucer, we did in Middle English, um, I will try to translate um, some of the more obscure elements as we go. But my Middle English is a little bit rusty. Although, <laughs> doing this, it's been getting a hell of a lot better. Um, um, but still, we'll... Uh, I'll adjust it as we go, so not a pure Middle English, and I'll play around with it on the fly, which is a lot of fun for me. So, please do, Sarah, did did all the comments cut out in the last scope? I haven't checked, and um, I should go and check things. Thank you, Louise, thank you, I'm glad, glad you're enjoying it, and thank you, thank you, thank you for all your wonderful sharing. By the way, um, I like the sharing. The sharing means an awful lot to me. So thank you. And thank you for the hearts as well, everyone. Definitely, definitely love the same. I hate it when that happens, sir, but when I can't see what folk are typing, um, I need to go through and check the catch. Thank you. This is one of my favourites. Um, I need to go sweater shopping at the weekend, actually, because, because, why not? It's winter. We should go sweater shopping. Anyway. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Everyone. Hello, hello, Ali. Hello, Ara. Hello, Janet. Come in, come in, come in. We're just about to start reading from Edmund Spencer's epic, The Fairy Queen. And I'll start, I'll start with the opening from the first book. As I say, we won't read the entire thing because the entire thing is huge. But hopefully this should give you a wonderful taste of the world of Edmund Spencer. This is, ladies and gents, the Fairy Queen. Lo, I the man whose muse will home did mask as time her taunt in lowly shepherd's weeds am now Enforced a far unfitter task, for trumpet stern to change my oaten weeds, and sing of knights and ladies' gentle deeds, whose prayers, having slept in silence long, me all too mean the sacred muse a reeds. To blazon broad amongst her learned throng fierce wars and faithful loves shall moralise my song. Help them, O holy virgin chief of nine, thy weak novice to perform thy will lay forth out of thine everlasting screen the antique rolls which there lie hidden still. Of Fairy knights and fairest Gloriana, who that most noble Briton prince so long sought through the world and suffered so much ill that I must rue his undeserved wrong. O oh, help thou my weak wit and sharpen my dull tongue, and thou most dreaded imp of highest Jove, fair Venus's son, that 
with thy cruel dart at that good knight so cunningly didst rove that glorious fire it kindled in his heart lay now thy deadly ebony bow apart and with thy mother mild come to my aid come both with you bring triumphant mart in loves and gentle jollities arrayed after his murderous spoils and bloody rage aloud and then also o goddess heavenly bright mirror of grace and majesty divine great lady of the greatest isle whose light like phoebus's lamp throughout the world does shine shed thy fair beams into my feeble eyes and raise my thoughts too humble and too vile to think of that true glorious type of thine the argument of mine afflicted style the which to hear vouchsafe o oh, dearest dread a while that was the opening to the fairy queen this is book one or canto one the patron of true holiness foul error doth defeat hypocrisy him to entrap does to his home entreat a gentle knight was spurring on the plain clad in mighty arms with a silver shield wherein all dents of deep wounds did remain the cruel marks of many a bloody field yet arms till that time did he never wield his angry steed did chide at his foaming bit as much disdaining to the curb to yield full gallant knight he seemed and fair did sit as one for knightly gusts and fierce encounters fit but on his breast a bloody cross he bore the dare remembrance of his dying lord for whose sweet sake that glorious badge he wore and dead as living ever him adored upon his shield the like was also scored for sovereign hope which in his help he had right faithful true he was indeed and word but of his cheer did he seem too solemn and sad yet nothing did he dread but ever was he feared upon a great adventure he was bound that greatest gloriana to him gave that greatest glorious queen of fairy land to win him worship and her grace to have which of all earthly things he did most crave and ever as he rode his heart did yearn to prove his power in battle brave upon his foe and his new force to learn upon his foe a dragon horrible and stern a lovely lady rode him fair beside upon a lonely ass more white than snow yet she much whiter but the same did hide under a veil that wimpled and was low and over a black stole she did throw as one that inly mourned so was she sad and heavily sat upon her palfrey slow seemed in heart some hidden care she had and by her on a leash a milk-white lamb she led so pure and innocent as that same lamb she was in life and every virtuous law and by descent from royal lineage came of ancient kings and queens that had of yore their sceptres stretched from east to western shores and all the world was in their subjection held till that infernal fiend with foul uproar for wasted all their land and then expelled whom to avenge she had this night from far summoned behind her far away a dwarf did lag that lassie seemed in being ever last or wearied with the bearing of her bag of needment at his back 
Thus, as they passed the day with clouds was sudden overcast, and angry Jove a hideous storm of rain did pour into his leman's lap so fast that every wight should take shelter it did constrain, and this fair couple also shrouded themselves eagerly, enforced to seek some covert night at hand, a shady grove not far away they saw, that promised them safety from the tempest to withstand it among those lofty trees clad with summer's pride. They spread so broad, and heaven's light did hide, not penetrable with any power of star, and all within were paths and alleys wide, with footing worn and leading inward far, fair harbour that then seemed so in they entered ah. And forsooth that and forsooth they pass with pleasure forward led, joying to hear the bird's sweet harmony which there enshrouded from the tempest dread, seemed in their song to scorn the cruel sky. Much did they praise the trees so straight, and high the sailing pine, the cedar proud and tall, the vine prop elm, the poplar never dry, the builder oak sole king of forests all, the aspine good for staves, the cypress funeral, the laurel reward, of mighty conquerors and poet sage, the fair that weepeth still, the willow, worn of forlorn paramours, the willow, obedient to the bender's will, the birch for shafts, the yew for the mill, the mare sweet bleeding in the bitter wound, the warlike beech, the ash for nothing ill, the fruitful olive and the plane tree round, the carver home, the maple sealed them inward sound. Led with delight, they thus beguile the way until the blustering storm is overblown, when, thinking to return whence they did stray, they cannot find the path which first was shown, but wander to and fro in ways unknown, furthest from end then, when they nearest ween what that makes them doubt, their wits be not their own, so many paths, so many turnings seen, that which of them to take in diverse doubt they had been. At last, resolving forward still to fare, till that some they did find, or in or out, that path they take, that beaten seemed most bare, and like to lead the labyrinth about which when, by tract, they hunted, had throughout at length it brought them to a hollow cave. Amid the thickest woods, the champion stout at once dismounted from his courser brave, and to the dwarf a while his needless spear he gave. Be well aware, quoth then that lady mild, Least sudden mischief ye too rash provoke. The danger hid, the place unknown and wild breeds dreadful doubts. Oft fire is without smoke, and pebble without show, therefore your strokes their night withhold till further trial made. Ah, lady, said he, shame were to draw back the forward footing because of a hidden shade. Virtue gives herself light through darkness fall to wade. Yes, but, said she, the peril of this place, I better know then than you, but not now, too late, to wish you back return with foul disgrace, ye wisdom's worn, whilst foot is in at the gate, to stay the step before being forced to retreat. This is the wandering wood, this error's den, a monster vile, whom God and man does hate. Therefore I read, beware, fly, fly, quoth then the fearful dwarf. This is no place for living men. But full of fire and 
greedy boldness. The youthful knight could not for anything be stopped, but went forth into the darksome hole and looked in. His shining armour made a little gloomy night, much like a shade, by which he saw the ugly monster plain, half like a serpent, horribly displayed, but the other half did a woman's shape still retain, most loathsome, filthy, foul, and full of vile disdain. And as she lay upon the dirty ground, her huge, long tail, her den all overspread, yet was in knots, and many coils upwound, pointed with a mortal sting. Of her there bred a thousand young ones, which she daily fed, sucking upon her poisonous breasts, each one of sundry shapes, yet all ill-favoured. Soon as that unfamiliar light upon them shone, into her mouth they crept, and suddenly all were gone. The dam upstart, out of her den alarmed, and rushed forth, hurling her hideous tail above a cursed head, whose folds extended, were stretched now forth at lend, without coiling, she looked about, seeing one in mail armed completely, and sought back to turn again for light she hated, as the deadly injury had ever accustomed in desert darkness to remain, where plain none might see see her, nor see she any man plain, which was when the valiant elf perceived, and he leapt as Leon fierce upon the flying prey, and with his cutting blade, her boldly kept from turning back, and forced her to stay, therefore enraged, she loudly began to bray, and turning first, her speckled tail advanced, threatening her angry sting, him to defeat, who naught aghast his mighty hand lifted up the stroke down from her head unto her shoulder glanced and much daunted with that dent her sense was dazed yet kindling rage herself she gathered round and all at once her beastly body raised with doubling forces high upon the ground then wrapping all her wretched stern around leapt fierce upon his shield and with her huge tail all suddenly about his body wound that hand or foot to stare he strove in vain god help the man so wrapped in error's endless train his lady sad to see his sore constraint cried out now sir knight show what you be and faith to your force and be not faint strangle her else she sure will strangle thee that did he hear in great perplexity his goal was wrath for grief and high distance and knitting all his force he got one hand free wherein he gripped her throat and so with great pain that soon to loose her wicked bands did she constrain Therewith she spewed out her filthy maw, a cloud of poison, horrible and black, full of great lumps of flesh and gobbets roar, which struck so vividly that it forced him back, his grasping hold, and from her turned him back. Her vomit, full of books and papers, was, with loathly frogs and toad, which eyes did lack, and creeping, sought way in the weedy grass, her filthy vomit, all the place defiled has. As when old father Nihilus skins to swell with seasonal pride among the Egyptian vale, his rich waves do fertile slime outwell and overflow each plain and lowly dale. But when his later spring begins to subside, Huge heaps of mud he leaves, wherein there breed ten thousand kinds of creatures, partly male and partly female, of his fruitful seed. Such ugly monstrous shapes elsewhere may no man see. The same so sore annoyed has the night that well nigh choked with the deadly stink his forces fail no can no longer fight whose courage when the fiend perceived to shrink she poured forth out of her hellish sink her fruitful curse spawn of serpents small 
deformed monsters, foul and black as ink, which shrawing all about his legs did crawl, and him encumbered sword, but could not hurt at all. And there, I think, will us end the opening to the Fairy Queen, Book One, Canto One, as our valiant Knight of the Red Cross faces off against a monstrous being in an enchanted world. And hello, Jess, welcome back to watching the show live. Welcome back, welcome. What did we think of that, ladies and gents? Did we enjoy the Fairy Queen? Um, I hope you guys did uh, enjoy that. I really enjoyed reading that. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for the crowns and the hearts. Thank you, Queen. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Taz and Arkadina and Rosella. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was actually, it's been a long time since I read uh, The Furby Queen. And when I first read it, I have to confess, I was probably... Um, not at the right age to enjoy it, or in the right situation. I was forced to read it as part of my degree, uh, and I didn't enjoy reading it at the time. But, thank you, Susan. Wow, you really loved that one, Susan. Thank you, Rosella. Thank you. I'm glad, glad you liked that. I've actually been, been curious as to what do we do after Les Mort d'Arthur. Because um, we're getting through Les Mort at a fast pace, where... We're almost halfway through Les Mort d'Arthur now. And I've got to start thinking about what do we read next? And it seemed, it seems that you guys kind of got a real kick out of The Fairy Queen. I certainly loved reading that. Let me tell you, The Fairy Queen is a million times better. And I mean a million times better read aloud than ever it was in private. I, I enjoyed that hugely, and I'm glad you guys did as well. So I think perhaps, perhaps when we finish um, with Les Mort d'Arthur, I might go and uh, go and do uh, the, the Fairy Queen instead. Fairy Queen, is it not? Oh, are we not doing well on the learning comes later today? Um, Believe it or not, that actually came from an event which is the inspiration for why I do this to begin with. Um, I do this all um, because I went to something called the Do Lectures and had some wonderful conversations there. And that is actually the canvas from one of the chairs. Is it your favourite English poet? Is it? Oh, that's wonderful, Susan. Well, uh, I, tell you, I, think, I think for me, I think... Well, I don't think we've had that kind of big reaction. Oh, I am. Well, thank you, Susan. Thank you. I'm glad. Well, that's, I think it's making me blush, Susan. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I, I think definitely um, we'll look at doing some Fairy Queen. Um, which means I get to go shopping for translations and um, decide if I'm going to do... I, th I think the full Middle English isn't too bad. It's not hardcore Middle English. Um, it's late Middle English, um, bearing on to sort of Renaissance Middle English. So I think we'll be fine with an original copy. Um, he says, getting really nerdy about his translations now and which language it's in. But yeah, we'll go and do that. That sounds a lot of fun. So... Thank you so much, everyone, for coming tonight, for sharing that with me. Um, it was wonderful, wonderful to experience sharing that with you all. Excellent. Well, well then, Susan and Jess, let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you very, very much. When we finish off with Les Mort, let's go and hit Fairy Queen, because epic English poetry um, about knights and smiting just doesn't get better than those two books. They kind of, um, you know, once you get, if you do Les Mort, Fairy Queen and Beowulf, that trifecta, um, I think that should have us sorted and also give us enough reading to carry us through for about 10 years. <laughs> so yes, let's, let's make it happen. I'm excited for that. Anyway, I'd like to say a massive, massive thank you to all. I'm going to go run off now. 
Um, I've got an early start tomorrow morning and I've actually got still got a lot of prep work that I need to do um, before uh, tomorrow. But we will be back here for tomorrow night. I thought I was going to get a late train back from London. I'm getting the early train back from London. So we'll be here for a Thursday night show when we'll be reading... Oh, we're doing Goblin Market by Rossetti. Oh, you'll like... If any of you haven't experienced Christina uh, Rossetti yet, you will love the Goblin Market by Rossetti. It's wonderful. Um, it's full of, of, of brilliant, brilliant gothic imagery. And uh, it's a great poem. Very long poem. Really important. We're looking forward to that. And of course, Sir Tristram is going to face off against the Knights of the Round Table. And also, I'm having a pumpkin delivered. So, yes, yes, Halloween it is. Well, Susan, you, I think you'll really, really like Rossetti. And there's a lot of wonderful stuff in Rossetti. So I'm looking forward to introducing her to you tomorrow. And in the meantime, everyone, have a wonderful night, evening, morning, afternoon. Wherever you are, I'll see you here tomorrow. Thank you so much. Tonight was so much fun. Yes, he's fighting the Knights of the Round Table, Queen. Sir Tristram will have to face off against Knights of the Round Table. Totally, Jess. Big high five for the pre-Raphaelites. Um, it's going to be good, good fun. I'll see you guys then. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.